Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. Today I've got a fun little experiment with some Dillon hand dye. I am going to dip one end into some Bahama Blue, one end into some Flamingo Pink, and see sort of what happens in the middle. These dyes I mixed initially each had about three cups of water and three tablespoons of salt in with almost an entire packet of dye. And I used this to hand paint some other yarn. But one thing that I've observed in the past with these Dillon hand dyes is that it really sort of soaks up the cotton like a straw. So I wanted to see if I set this up like this, we would see so some white in the middle, or if the color would sort of travel all the way up the yarn. Already, I can see some color traveling. I am a little intrigued. So I'm gonna zoom in and leave the camera on and let's see what happens. I considered doing a time lapse here uh, because when I added the dry, this dry cotton yarn onto the, into the dye before, I just watched all of a sudden, shoop, it soaked up this dye. I'm not sure actually now if the dye is gonna travel further. I'm not really seeing much happen in real time. So I'll check back in about 25 minutes and we'll see if it has moved at all. It has been about, oh, 25 minutes or so. And I'm not seeing a lot of color wicking up. But we are gonna have some really cool variegated yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for another 30 minutes. It has been an hour. I'm going to carefully just up and wring out some of the excess pink dye with one hand. And then carefully wring out some of the excess blue, plop it into some water, and we're going to take this to the sink so we can wash this properly. Alright, we just have to plop this in. So it's going to be a lot of dye to rinse out of this one. See if I can find where the, there we go. I'm wondering how much white will be left versus other colors. But first, I think I get all this other stuff out. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much dye in here that we may have stained those white patches just now. But we'll see, we'll keep watching. Washing. This uh, yarn, this particular yarn is notorious for holding on to color for dear life. But those colors are bright and loud. Super, super loud, almost electric. I am really curious to see if they will still read that way once they have dried. It's kind of fun when you like pick it up and it hasn't mixed up yet. The multiple colors. I think one of the reasons why this is so hard to rinse out is that the yarn is so absorbent. So it's hard to get the dye moving through. But I think we're gonna have some stunning, stunning variegated cotton yarn here. And now, you know, clearly there's still a lot of rinsing to do. I'm going to add some Dawn dish soap. So I had hand painted with this dye, but I hadn't dunked anything in it yet. And so clearly, from this vibrancy that we're still seeing, there was plenty of dye left. And if anything, these colors are, I mean, this is more electric than what the packages say. So, at this stage, I am going to keep rinsing and then we'll hang up the yarn to dry. 
The Bahama Blue and Flamingo Pink are extremely vibrant, even after all of the washing. I, I'd say that these colors are very true to advertise, and I think that's a good thing when you're dealing with a commercial dye. I had hoped that this absorbent sugar and cream yarn would act like a straw, and that we might have pulled up some of the dye more into the strands. But I think that I had only observed this before because a lot more of the yarn had some contact with the water and the place where it sort of wicked up into was less than an inch above the surface. Nevertheless, this is a really fun, vibrant, beautiful repeating colorway. There is some white left in this yarn, but in these palest sections, there is also a hint of blue. And I'm assuming that this is color that sort of absorbed a little bit as we were rinsing the yarn. This colorway is beautiful, but I have found that these dial-on hand dyes require a lot more rinsing when you're using a really absorbent cotton yarn. This sugar and cream yarn required a lot more washing than some of the superwash wools and everything that I used, even with this identical batch of dye. I think that even though the colors didn't wick up like a straw, like I had kind of hoped that they would, the yarn still will hold on to the unbound colored liquid, meaning it requires a lot of rinses to get the dye out. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you for watching this video where I dipped portions of this yarn into some Dylon hand dye. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I love to play with color on a variety of different fiber types, and you'll find everything from dyeing cotton yarn to wool, sock yarn to jumbo, even t-shirts. If you love some of the yarn dyed by Chemnitz so much that you would like to bring some home, check out the Chemnitz Creations store on Etsy. Most of the colorways I dye only have a single one available, but there are dozens of skeins that have been featured in past and that are coming in upcoming dyeing videos. Thank you so much for watching.